you do DoorDash, do not deliver to 166 Lower Creek Road. If you get that address, please cancel immediately. Ignore the high tip. It's not worth it. I haven't been DoorDashing long. I think it's been two months since I started, and now I'm writing this submission from the trunk of my car. Why am I writing this instead of calling the cops? Well, because I've already called 911, and the dispatcher laughed and hung up. According to her, 166 Lower Creek Road doesn't exist, and they get a prank call about that address every other night. Hell, she even said that Lower Creek Road has been closed for years. So I'm writing my story on here, because you will all believe me. I was in the last 10 minutes of a 4 hour shift with DoorDash. When I saw that it was 10.50pm, I decided to call it a night and head home. I then attempted to end my DoorDash, but a new order popped up. Go to McDonald's, the pay showed $50. The pay is usually 10 at the highest, I couldn't say no. I was already close to McDonald's and it didn't take long to get there. Once inside, the cashier informed me that there wasn't a DoorDash order with the number I had. I looked at the items ordered and it was just an ice water and nothing else. $50 pay for an ice water? Whatever, I'll take it. The cashier laughed at the order and handed over a large styrofoam cup of water. She informed me they get an order like this every other night. As I walked back to my car, I felt very weird about this order. My gut told me to cancel, but I had already left the store with the item. The delivery address was only 3.5 miles out, and I reminded myself of the high payout, money that I really needed. So I pulled out onto the highway and made my way to Lower Creek Road. In no time, the GPS had me on a heavily wooded dirt road. It was very curvy and hard to navigate in the dark. My paranoia had me seeing things out of the corner of my eyes. I pressed on. After what felt like an eternity, the GPS said aloud, turn left onto Lower Creek Road in a quarter mile. Once at the road, there wasn't any road sign, but I made the left anyway. Your destination will be on your right in one mile, the GPS said. Off the bat, I noticed none of the mailbox numbers started with a one. They all started with a six. And if the road was like any other, then the actual address of my destination was 666 Lower Creek Road. Now... I'm not religious or superstitious, but the idea that the address was actually 666 made me feel even more worried. All the homes on the road looked very run down and deserted. I was now only about 400 feet from my turn, and I could see an old rusty mailbox at the end of the driveway. Sure enough, the numbers on the mailbox read 666. The GPS sang out that I was at my destination, and the DoorDash app read off the delivery instructions. Leave at my feet. Do not disturb. Those words chilled me. Usually the directions were simple. Leave at door or hand to customer. I slowly pulled down the driveway, which was fully surrounded by thick undergrowth and large trees. The little dirt road finally gave way to an opening. There was no house in the clearing. Sitting right in the middle of the opening were what seemed to be three men. They were sitting on lawn chairs in a semicircle. They were illuminated by a blue light that was being emitted from the ground by what looked like a projector. They all had their hands up in the air and they were looking directly into the blue light. The scene made me so nervous, I began to feel nauseous. I got out of my car and slowly walked towards them. I've never walked so slowly and quietly in my life. I didn't want them to notice me at all. Once I reached them, I could tell they were all completely naked. The man in the middle had a small box in his lap and smoke was coming from the box like something is smoldering inside it. There was a strong smell of burning hair around them. The only noise was the hum of the projector. I approached the man closest to the road and carefully tried to set the cup of ice water at his feet. My hands were shaking too badly and I dropped the cup, spilling the water all over his feet. None of them had any reaction. I promptly stood up and walked back to the car as fast as I could. My heart was beating out of my chest. When I got within about five feet of my car, I looked back towards the men. Only one of them remained in his seat. The other two were gone. For a moment everything felt still, and then the man's head snapped in my direction. 
He stood immediately and started sprinting towards me. I turned quickly to get in my car, but what I saw stopped me completely. The other two men were sitting in the driver and passenger seats, both of them staring forward. I heard the man's footsteps closing in from behind me, and before I could react, he tackled me headfirst into my car. The impact was violent, and I immediately felt blood running down my face. As I pleaded, the man dragged me back to the lawn chairs. He threw me down in the middle chair and dumped whatever was burning in the small box over my head. The embers burned my scalp. I began to scream as the man grabbed my face and forced me to stare into the light. My eyes began to get very heavy, and I couldn't keep them from closing. When they opened, I was no longer in the middle of the woods at night. It was now daylight. I was now high in the mountain and seated in front of a massive opening in the side of the mountain. Carvings were all around the outside of the opening. The carvings depicted faces with their mouths agape. The men were seated beside me. All three hummed in unison. The opening gave way to a large pit that seemed to be forever deep. A large gust of wind pushed out from within the mountain before the air was sucked back into the opening forcefully. It was like the mountain was breathing. Each exhale pushed me away. Each inhale pulled me closer and closer to the pit. My eyes widened as I realized it wasn't the mountain breathing, but that something very large down inside the mountain was the source of the air. Something very massive. Something very alive. Just the thought of the unidentified being made me want to scream out in madness. My fixation on the abyss was broken by a buzzing and vibration in my pocket. My phone was ringing. This broke my trance and I realized I was back in the woods in the middle of the night. I looked around me and realized that the three men were still in a meditative state as they looked into the blue light. I jumped from the chair and started to dash for my car. I crashed into the driver's side door and dug for my keys. Nothing. They were gone. I looked towards the men and noticed they were now walking towards me. I noticed my trunk was open and hopped inside before slamming it down. And that's how I ended up in the trunk. I'm laying here with no hope. I just want you to know to never deliver to 666 Lower Creek Road. Also, there is something in that mountain. It's alive, and it wants us all. <laughs>